Trouble Art Nation, I'm your host, Keller Keemstar. Let's go right into the news! And to this guy, Matt is what it is. I don't like you for two reasons. One, you make me have to admit that Keemstar did a good job with journalism, which he did. He did an excellent job. He exposed you for the fraud that you are. And two, you're a fraud. So what he said really offended me. And it seems to me that this guy is not trying to fix the problem. And again, trying to get as much attention as possible. He was apparently convinced that YouTube either weren't listening or weren't acting quickly enough. So this was the most rational way to fix the problem. I have no doubt in my mind that YouTube are already working as hard as they can to fix this problem because they know what happens if they don't. Sorry, I just disagreed with your video. I think it was a really stupid way you were going about it. Now it just seems like you could give less of a fuck. He's like, well, you know, unfortunately, uh, YouTubers are going to have to suffer. You don't give a shit. You don't give a shit. You just want the death of YouTube. Matt Watson is a fraud, and I'll, I'll save that towards the end, but let me explain what hashtag wake up YouTube is. It started with Matt Watson and this video. Yes, you could say this is kind of like another witch hunt that has occurred, and Mr. Matt kind of leading the crusade here has gotten his justice, so to speak. Now, here's the thing, Matt Watson, since you're not very bright and you're just looking for your 15 seconds of fame, this isn't gonna stop the pedos. It's not gonna stop. It. You wanna burn YouTube's pockets. You want all the advertisers to pull out. That's what you're gonna celebrate. Because you're a fucking failed YouTuber. I, I'm sorry. If I'm wrong, and I'm just misinterpreting the whole situation, I'm sorry. But it really fucking comes off that way, my dude. It really fucking does. So yes, the person who's running a pedo crusade may in fact be a pedo himself. So this whole, oh, let's tweet to big corporations and tell them not to advertise on YouTube movement is a bit unneeded in my opinion. I mean, YouTube are gonna fix the problem, so this whole thing is just doing more harm than good. And the funny thing is, these people literally think they're like some next level heroes for doing this stuff. Just take a look at this post from the YouTube Wake Up subreddit. This is the most important event of the decade. <laughs> My opinion, this guy is a complete fraud and this is not about making YouTube safe. This is not about YouTube's doing nothing because YouTube is doing something. This is about Matt Watson trying to get as much internet attention as possible and trying to be seen as... The online world of social media has been ablaze since the uploading of a video by a user named Matt's What It Is. His video was uploaded to YouTube on February 17th, 2019 and is titled, YouTube is facilitating the sexual exploitation of children and it's being monetized. The video now has almost 3 billion views and has popularized the pre-existing hashtag YouTube Wake Up, which also launched Matt Watson, the owner of the channel, into the spotlight and into the middle of a global controversy. Exposing exploitation has followed this viral exposure, focusing intentionally on the reception from e-celebrities and YouTubers. We did this because the content of his video addresses disturbing themes that have become familiar to us over the course of our investigations. Matt did feature some content from a member of our group and our Exposing Exploitation subreddit very briefly in the video. For this, we acknowledge his contribution to spreading awareness about online pedal whales and how they abuse livestream videos that underage users publish on the YouTube platform. He also brought to attention the comments left by other pedophile users on these videos, comments made from channels that are most likely to be Google-branded YouTube accounts, mass-created by pedophiles themselves. This mass number of branded YouTube accounts acts like a well-organized network enterprise to exploit children on the YouTube platform. Although many media outlets and commentators initially greeted Matt's video with agreement and support, a targeted counterforce has risen against him to censor and defame the entire YouTube wake up movement. You are more about money than you do about protecting people, you know? So what if it affects you? Go work at fucking KFC, bro. 
So what if it affects you? Go work at KFC. Okay. When his video, original video, had 30,000 views, I sent it to YouTube. All right, I say right here, we sent it to YouTube to get this content taken down. But obviously, Mr. Virtual Signaling here, it means that I just care about money. No, you want- These actions compromise the mission of child protective campaigns while sending the message to YouTube and Google that the safety of our children matters less than a corporation's hidden business practices. Many of these videos seek to attack Matt personally and claim that his involvement is a facade to gain popularity rather than creating a discourse on online child safety. Focusing on the actions of an individual discredits the movement or message they stand behind. Matt Watson has brought a tremendous amount of coverage to the shortcomings of a multi-billion dollar industry, namely refusing to pay attention to child endangerment and how their online platforms help facilitate the exploitation of children. What this video aims to do is refocus the issue back onto the real problem, the abuse occurring on YouTube. To fully understand this, we will be explaining the history of hashtag YouTube wake up and how this label has changed over the years. Several years ago, many people noticed this issue and started spreading awareness under different hashtags or labels, with communities forming to attempt education of the public at large. Hashtag YouTube wake up is a pressing issue needing further investigation, but we consider hashtag pedotube as the most important label to investigate currently. From what we have discovered, this is the oldest movement originating at least 10 years ago that covered YouTube's pedophile problem. Despite being published as early as 2009, they received little attention and never gained the traction they deserved. The original reporting of hashtag pedotube by a channel named Hog Tie alludes to why they were seemingly buried. Even in 2009, his videos were being censored, removed from search results, and targeted by false flagging. The constant attacks on his hashtag pedotube videos resulted in anonymous groups mirroring and re-uploading the videos to keep spreading awareness, while also stopping them from being removed by bad actors. Exposing exploitation is mirroring the older videos for everyone to see for themselves, and we hope you take the time to watch these decade-old efforts while understanding that these same issues need solving today. Some of these videos will be shared on our various channels. Looking at the hashtag pedotube videos with the benefit of hindsight, it is plain to see that little has been done. The same issues and methods of operations conducted by these predators are in fact still occurring on YouTube's platform, and the situation is far worse. Fast forwarding to 2017, our predecessor, Investigating YouTube, used the pedotube hashtag in their first video. As the disturbing themed children's content on YouTube was of a different nature, hashtag Elsagate became the eventual name for this phenomenon that was being investigated. Also in 2017, Pyrocynical was one of the first to cover the issue of underage children acting inappropriately on YouTube. As for hashtag YouTube wake up, we want to point out that one of the first videos to feature this hashtag was a French video from Leroy Dera, and it was a video made to help spread awareness of child exploitation via dares, challenges, yoga poses, and so on. Another video from the Spanish community followed soon after. Both of these videos were published in June 2018. So why ignore the origins of YouTube Wake Up and focus so much on the e-celeb aspect of it? Much of the current commentary hasn't showcased anyone objectively looking at how or why hashtag YouTube wake up became a trend. Exposing exploitation has been spreading awareness of these issues represented in hashtag YouTube wake up and also pushed hashtag groomtube and hashtag pedotube for many months now, yet the underlying causes are not sufficiently explored, if at all. It doesn't take an impeccable character to spread awareness for a serious moral issue but it takes a snide, self-centered, wannabe personality to put their self-interest first and gaslight anyone who even attempts to expose how children are being exploited on YouTube. Hashtag YouTube wake up may be a relatively new hashtag that became a very recent hot button issue, but the manifold issues surrounding it have existed on YouTube for far longer. The issues that led to the creation of hashtag YouTube wake up right now eclipse Matt as an individual or the legion of detractors attacking him. The whole e-celeb and social media sphere has lost the plot, and to us at exposing exploitation, online child safety will always be more important 
than money or fame or YouTube itself. Hi everyone, this is Haley Halverson from the National Center on Sexual Exploitation. Not a problem in and of itself. YouTube has a host of other problems. There's pornographic ads appearing on trending videos. A lot of pornography is on YouTube, but just has hidden titles. The YouTube's creepy kid videos on YouTube Kids app and more are still a problem that's not fully resolved, and those are often sexual in nature. And in 2017, it was reported that YouTube's child abuse reporting system actually wasn't working for a year. For a full year, their child abuse reporting system wasn't working properly, and they did not step in to solve it. Until they're still relying on human eyes to review this content. This is crazy. The, there are hours of videos being uploaded to YouTube every minute, and so YouTube is just waiting for users to report content or for the media to report harmful content, and then waiting on human eyes to review that content. That is too slow for the platform that they've created. YouTube needs to use more artificial intelligence and more proactive steps to start going after these videos instead of just relying on users to report them. You know, these are real girls that are being victimized and exploited, and it's time that YouTube actually take responsibility and make this their number one social priority.
like showing my feet. Not even to my best friend, not even to my mom. Here are my feet. Feet. There they are. There are my feet. Oh. Hello. Yeah, what is that? Take your socks off and show the... Um, <laughs> I don't know how I really want. I just told you I don't like showing my feet. <laughs> you shouldn't do stuff like that. Thank you. Yes, thank you.